Hi, this is Dave. So are you limiting God in your business or your career? You know, this may be one of the saddest of all situations. It's this, you have a business or a career for which God has had great plans. But those plans are never realized because you limited God's involvement in them. And you end your career with just a fraction of the impact that you could have had. And, you know, I believe that situation is the rule, not the exception for most Christians in the marketplace. If we could change that, we really could change the world in just one generation. You know, while God has great plans for our careers and our businesses, we all too often limit his intervention in our lives by the things that we do. And while there are lots of ways that we can limit God's involvement with us, here are three of the most common. So number one, ignorance. Ignorance. In this scenario, we just don't know how intensely God is interested in our business and our marketplace lives. We're ignorant of it because we've never really looked into it. Our attention has been directed elsewhere. Typically, that's either the institutional church system or the worldly success culture. Our our attention has been directed into the institutional church system, or it's been directed into the worldly success culture, or it could be a combination of those two. The institutional church system, and that's my term for the conglomerate of church buildings, pastors, worship services, denominations, seminaries, etc., that make up one of the largest industries in the world. This, the, this system promotes itself and thereby denigrates other areas of Christian growth. For example, you may be encouraged to attend every function of the institutional church and find yourself busy several days and nights a week. And since this is promoted as the example of a good Christian, everything else is, therefore, not good. So while you can be involved in the institutional church system and not have time to even consider that your career may be a ministry of its own. In the introduction to the good book on business, I observed that the reason why no one has discovered how big a role business plays in the biblical narrative is because no one looked for it. Let me repeat that. In the introduction to the good book on business, I observed that the reason why no one has discovered how big a role business plays in the Bible is because no one looked for it. It's been there all along, but no one found it because no one was looking for it. We were content to believe the pronunciations of the institutional church system that advocates for involvement in their programs as a way to get closer to God. So that's one source of ignorance. The other the other common reason for our ignorance of the role that God wants to play in our careers and businesses is our over-reliance on the world's success culture. You know, there's a huge industry that promotes worldly success. Books and seminars and training programs and webinars and blog posts, podcasts, etc., videos, YouTube videos, you know, they all promote success by various strategies and tactics. And if we choose to, we can immerse ourselves in that culture and mindset to such a degree that there is no room in our psyche for anything else. We never realize that God wants to be a part of our careers and businesses because we're too busy pursuing worldly success. And so, we're ignorant. We're ignorant of his desires for our careers and our businesses. So ignorance is one. Here's another one, inertia, inertia. It may be that we have intellectually an understanding of our careers and businesses as ministry. We've read people like me who have presented that message. We've rubbed shoulders with other Christian business people, and we have absorbed some of their commitment to Christ in the marketplace. But we have not translated those ideas into action. We just have not yet asked if we could pray for a troubled colleague. We have not yet given verbal credit to God for our successes. We have not yet acknowledged the opportunities and the gifts he has given us. We know that there are routines and disciplines in the life of a Christian and that there are routines and actions that God that invite God into our lives, but we don't necessarily 
take the necessary step to implement them. So our inertia holds us back. We understand God wants to be a part of our lives and businesses, but inertia prevents us from acting. So the first reason we're not as active as we could be is ignorance. Second is inertia. Third is comfort. Now, some of us have achieved a degree of success in our professions and businesses, and we're comfortable. We've become afraid to jeopardize that comfortable condition by doing something different. We don't want to start a meeting with a prayer, for example, because that would be uncomfortable. We don't want to ask a colleague if we can pray for him or her because that would be uncomfortable. We don't acknowledge a Christian commitment when opportunity presents itself because that would be fill in the blank, uncomfortable. We don't want to ask the Holy Spirit to influence our plans and open opportunities for us because we're afraid of what might happen. Our attachment to our comfortable lives prevents God from entering into our careers and businesses in a bigger way. You know, if we could if we could eliminate these three obstacles, ignorance, inertia, and comfort, we could change the world in a generation. We could create powerful businesses. We could create a, a, and live a more fulfilled and purposeful life. Okay. By the way, I'm going to recommend uh, you go get my book, The Good Book on Business, The Good Book on Business, which really describes from the Bible, what the Bible has to say about business. You will you will never, your view of business will never be the same. You will come across some concepts you have never, ever seen before, and you owe it to your Christian maturity to uh, to understand what the Bible has to say about businesses. Okay, the good book on business. I'll put a link in the show notes. That's it. We're done. Bye-bye.